Okay, let's give you guys some practice now. So use cylindrical coordinates to work out the volume of this wedge. So uh, the, you've got a plane here, z, uh, z equals negative y. So in your mind, picture the z-axis, the y-axis, uh, z equals negative y looks like this. The absence of an x, the absence of an x in an equation means you're going to get a trace parallel to the x-axis. So really, this is your plane here. So what that means is, uh, you've got a plane here, you've got a plane z equals negative y, and then, uh, so here in the x direction, you're going to get a plane looking like this. And then uh, down here, you're going to get a circle of radius 2, so that's this circle here. And then uh, the absence of z, the absence of a z means you're going to get a trace in the z direction. So really here, you've got a cylinder. So where the plane intersects with the cylinder and above the xy plane, you're going to get this wedge. So find the volume of this wedge using cylindrical coordinates. So press pause and have a go. Okay, so to do this, um, in, um, in Cartesian form, if we convert it from, if we convert this dv into cylindrical coordinates, it's going to give us this. And I'm expecting you to know this by now. Okay, so so this thing here will then become this. So now it's just a matter of setting up our limits of integration. Uh, looking at this inner integral, you're you're working in the z direction. So you're moving along like this. You're moving in the z direction. You're moving in the z direction. You're moving in the z direction. But um, looking, thinking in terms of the z direction, well, you start at a a z level of zero and then you will stop when you hit the plane so this is your plane here so you start at um, at zero and then you hit the plane somewhere around here you start at let's say here uh, at an elevation of zero and then you hit you stop when you hit this plane here so uh, let's say you're here you will move up and then you hit the plane let's say you're here you will move up and then you hit the plane let's say you're here you're going to move up and then stop when you hit the plane. So, um, so you start at an elevation of zero, and then you stop when you get to the plane, and the plane is negative y. Later on, we can put um, this into the y here. Later on, but now think in terms of in terms of r. So, in terms of r, you're actually doing this. In terms of r, you're you're starting. Well, you you want to do this. Well, you start at a radius of zero, and then you stop. Well, here you can see that you, you've got to move like this. Hang on. You've got to move like this. 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 You've got to move like this, and so on. So, um, oops. You, sh you should stop when you get to... You should stop when you get to here. So, um, well, anyway, you've, you've got to move like this, basically. Hang on. You've got to move like this, and then you stop when you get to here. So, um, so we need a way to describe this circle. Well, in Cartesian form, the circle is given by this, but we need to translate it into uh, polar coordinates, into cylindrical coordinates. So uh, cylindrical coordinates would be you putting this. Well, here, here you can see that um, you, you, you're moving from a radius of 0, and then you stop at the circle. Start at 0 and then you stop at the circle. You start at zero, and then you stop at the circle. But we need a way to describe this circle in cylindrical form. Well, in cylindrical form, you would put this into here. You would put this into here, and then tidy this up. So putting those two into here, it would then give you this. It would then give you this. So, uh, so now multiply this out. That will then give us. That will then give us. That will then give us uh, this. And then uh, this thing here will then become this. And then uh, notice that you've got r squared and sine squared here. Factor out the r squared. Uh, that will then give you this. And then these two fours they will cancel each other out. Um, that will then give us this thing here. And then uh, move this block to the other side. That will then give us this. And then uh, 
r equals zero is meaningless in our case, so ignore r equals zero. So uh, r, so that circle can be can be uh, described by using this. So the the equation for our circle is given by the equation for this circle is given by this thing here in cylindrical form. So let's start again here. We've got to set up our limits of integral. Um, in terms of z, you're integrating from a height of zero to the plane, from the height of zero to the plane. But we are working in uh, cylindrical form. In cylindrical form, y is r sine theta. And then, uh, and then in terms of the radius, now we've got to work in terms of the radius. Well, the radius, you're doing it like this. You're moving from a radius of zero to the circle. You start at a radius of zero, and then you stop when you get to the circle. Well, the circle is given by this. So you stop when you get to the circle, which is four cos theta. And then, uh, and then in terms of the angle, remember, in terms of the angle, hang on, let me clear this up. In terms of the angle, you're actually doing this. You're actually doing this. You start at, a, at an angle of zero, which is here, and then you move around here. But the thing is, you don't start integrating into you get to uh, into you get to here, which is from from an angle of zero. This is ninety degrees, hundred and eighty, and then two seventy. So you start integrating when it's three pi over two. So you start at three pi over two. So hang on, let me clear this up. So you start at three pi over two. So you start at three pi over two, and then you move around, move around, move around, move around, move around, and then you stop by the time you get to two pi. So you're actually integrating from here to two pi. So the volume is given by this. Now it's just a matter of us evaluating that. So we are currently here. We are currently here. Uh, integrate this. So, uh, so look at this inner integral. We've got to integrate it with respect to z. So when you integrate this number one, it will just give you z, and you're doing it from zero to to four cos. You're doing it from. Hang on, let me think. Hang on, let me think. Where have I made a mistake? Oh, yes, no, sorry, silly me. Um, we are currently here. Sorry, hang on. We are currently here. When you, uh, when you integrate this, it will give you um, this thing here. And we're doing it from 0 to uh, minus or sine theta. Minus or sine theta. Earlier, I was looking over here. Uh, I should be looking at this. Anyway, we are currently here. Sorry about that. So now, uh, now, uh, now we are currently here. So now uh, put this into here. That will then give us. That will then give us. That will then give us this thing, and then you take away, put zero into here, which will be zero. Take away zero, which will then give us this thing here. So now, um, now look at the second inner integral. Uh, we oh, let's merge these two r's together. So that will then give us r squared. So now we've got to integrate it. We've got to integrate this thing with respect to r. So this block here is a constant. So when you integrate this, it will just give you r minus r to the power of 3, and then you've got your third. And you're doing it from 0 to here. And you're doing it from 0 to here. And then, uh, and then you would put this into here. So when you when you cube this thing here, four cubed is four times four times four, which is sixty four here, and then uh, you've got to cube this cos t cos theta, which is this thing here, and then you've got your constant, you've got your constant, and then you've got your third third minus minus. So that will then take us to here. Uh, when you put zero into here, the whole thing will be zero. So we are now currently here, and then. Hang on, and then 
and then and then we can take this constant out and then that will then just give us uh, this thing here so integrate this so you you um, this is actually quite easy to integrate don't bother using um, so integration by substitution just make this to be your initial guess to the power of 4 theta so when you differentiate it it would be 4 uh, cos to the power of 3 theta times the times uh, sine theta so you can see it's very close all you need to do is negate this 4 so stick a uh, well don't forget sorry there was a negative here uh, so so uh, well if you integrate this thing here you're going to get this thing here with the negative here so now um, now let me think so we are currently here so let's let's just um, take this negative out here so it becomes this and just concentrate on this bit so now we can put um, uh, 2 pi into here uh, 2 cos cos of 2 pi hang on cos of 2 pi is 1 so uh, so that this whole block here will be 1 1 to the power of 4 is 1 so that will then give us this um, put this into here remember this is um, this is 2 pi this is pi this is 3 pi 3 pi over 2 here which is 0 anyway put this into here it would be 0 so that would then take us to here so the volume the overall volume would be given by 16 over 3 okay